Something that's closely related to the effect of the lead-in is the cornering method. Now in the software you have the ability generally to choose sharp corners or round corners. Choosing a round corner would seem obvious once again because the machine would give a smooth path around the, the part that you're cutting. Now a round corner doesn't mean that your part's going to actually have round corners. If you've in fact drawn your part with a sharp corner then that's what you will get. When you have the setting sharp corners set to false or have selected round corners it means that the path of the machine, remember it's not cutting on the line that you've drawn, it's cutting off to the side on the tool path not the drawing path. So if you have round corners the tool path will actually travel along the side of the shape and will then proceed to do a radius around your corner before it changes direction. Now that would seem logical and the machine does travel very smoothly around this type of uh, corner. However, a couple of things happen. Remember the arc is electricity and superheated gas or plasma. Now that's burning. It's very, very hot. And the metal, of course, is subject to that heat. If you are to actually travel around the corner in a radius, the diameter of your cut is traveling along like this and you'll notice that as you go around the corner for a brief period of time the arc is continuously in contact with the corner. Now that'll generally mean that you're going to end up melting the corner off your part slightly. You're quite welcome to try round corners but in most cases sharp corners will benefit you. With sharp corners the machine is still travelling at an offset from the original shape. However, when you get to the corner of your drawing, the machine will actually keep on travelling past until it meets an actual 90 degree corner. This causes the machine to stop at this point, accelerate to nothing, and then begin travelling in the opposite direction, once again starting from zero and accelerating onto the next shape, on the next path. Now something happens, as you're travelling along, when you get out to this sharp corner, you'll notice that the arc is no longer near the edge of your part. This allows the part to cool slightly, it stops the arc from burning the part away, and it also forces the machine to decelerate correctly and come to a smooth stop. Once the machine's done this, it starts travelling in the new direction, once again makes contact with the edge of your part and continues to cut it in the correct shape. Both methods give you a square corner, but sharp corners will in fact give you a slightly sharper corner, but it's much kinder on the machine. The reason this is, is when you do a round corner, the machine doesn't see it as a severe obstacle. The machine will generally travel quite abruptly around that arc because it doesn't see it as a change in direction, but rather a smooth change. Having a sharp corner forces the machine to acknowledge that it's a point where it has to change direction abruptly, and the machine will come smoothly to a stop, settle, and then carry, off, carry on in the correct direction. If you don't use sharp corners, the machine can end up with what you call speed wobbles. It will travel along here, and then it'll start bouncing slightly until it catches up. Because the machine is made of metal, every structure has a resonant frequency. And that means the machine will actually vibrate to some extent at whatever the given frequency of it is. And that'll end up with some noticeable little lines after your corners. So the simple answer is, use the sharp corner setting and you'll get sharp corners on your job.